We got the media team in there. Where the media Where team? Where the media team? We got content. TV's in the go. We got TV in the go. You looking for that fire clubhouse content? Well, you need to subscribe to the home. Hey, yo, clubhouse TV. Let's get to the content. That's a good one. You think that Black Sam put that in that interview, though, to, like, shut Big U up? Because he was he been going on a campaign. Like, Let's just say this. Nip. I don't talk to Black Sam directly, but I talk to him indirectly. <laughs> Black Sam put a call in a couple months ago and said the things y'all been doing is motivating me to speak. Been the block. So check it out. We got WAC 100 reacting to Big U, posting a pic of him and DJ Khaled, and WAC goes off. WAC also explains how Big U sent loose Cannon and his team to shut it down. So let's listen to what WAC talking about. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Run the content. Been the block. So Big U responded to that whole interview. He put up a picture with DJ Khaled. People were saying that he got the time frame wrong. Of course he put it up with the bro. That was the whole play. So listen. Look. When Nip brought him over there, right? Draws get hot. He said, this nigga, this nigga think he bigger than me. He bringing niggas to this magnitude to the set. Nigga, that's supposed to come through me. Or oh, I'm supposed to be there. So what he do? He called Loose Cannon, the squad. This is why I be like, I don't know why they playing with Loose. They know what Loose do. Yeah, I don't know why they be playing with Loose name like that. I mean, just because he talk a little different or something. You know what I mean? They think Loose a bust or something. But nah, man, they know what Loose do, man. But uh, Clubhouse TV, y'all. Let's get back to the content. Been the block. He called Loose. Send loose over there. Go shut it down. Right? So when loose get over there on the shutdown, right? They trying to politic with loose. So big you hit loose, get him on the phone. So when he get the big loose thinking, big you gonna get on the phone and give his orders and they gonna clean it up. You know what big you do? Who that call it? Yeah, yeah, it's me, big you. What, what's up? Oh man, uh, I don't know what nephew you on. Yo, loose, loose, fall back. You see the play? Loose cannon looking crazy as a mother fall back. Nigga, you just didn't got me up and got the nigga. What is you talking about? Fall back. Right? So now loose like hey homie. Nigga, you he like nah loose. I got it. It's all right, yo, Cali. I'ma holla at you. What's your line? So he send loose over there with the press, get loose close to the nigga on the jack, and then act like to, to call it, he's stopping loose cannon them. Nipsey them ain't no fool. They know who loose moving for. Loose will come in here and tell you he was a torpedo on it. And after that, he started milking this Cali. The old the same way he got next to TI. We set up the whack 100 press with all the bloods. And the crib show up to our favorite Denny's in Westwood, and you saved the day, and that's your contact. We was lining niggas like that up for years. Mm. It's a fact. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, but see, Big you, Big you, so stupid, right? The <laughs> nigga, he puts up the picture of Khaled and him and Fat Joe and Rich Player, right? But I think he thinks that picture was before Nipsey died, because I think he was that's trying to. After. That's yeah, exactly. After. The pic, the picture was after Nipsey died, but I think he was trying to put that picture, trying to show niggas like it was before, trying to like discredit Sam's story. But all he did was verify Sam's story. Wow, that's crazy. If this is true, that man really is a bozo. But uh, Clubhouse TV, y'all, let's get back to the content. Been the block with that. But picture. let me tell you where you at. Sam never said his name. Me and Luke Cannon. Right. We been said the name a while back. When Sam mentioned it, niggas with a brain said, oh, hold on. Niggas, the powers that be had a problem was whoop the whoop with Khaled over here. Hold up. That's what Wack and Luke's been talking about. Sam never said the nigga name. The, the dumbest thing he could do is respond to Sam's interview. And identify himself. Interview is now letting people know, oh, you who Sam talking about without saying your name. 
Yeah, that's true because he didn't even say his name. He never it said just, his name internet, one time in the whole movie. interview. Yeah, the internet was just alluding that it could have been Big U, but they didn't know for sure. But I heard on the Drink Champs interview, he showed text messages or something, and it was about Khaled. So people kind of put... Nah, it was a Kev up. Mack interview. Oh, the Kev Mack. Bro, you seen that clip I just put up? Hell yeah, with the contracts? Did you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I seen that. Yo. Yeah. No, what I got to gain, I don't got no contracts on Nipsey. I never, Nipsey was never, I never had none contract. Oh, yeah, Nipsey signed to me 10 years, yep. 2009 to 20, yep. Oh, so that mean the marathon, yep. Hello, that's me too. That nigga was smiling like a motherfucker, boy. I'm not done. You know, the contracts, you see that? You see the date? 53 days after Nipsey died, May 23rd, 2019. You said whack 100 the contracts and then told me pull up. I got the other ones too. You wanted me to make it look like I brought you out of the contracts and go at the estate. And I told you I'm not that. That's his kid's money. The nigga was just here. You was all in his face and you ain't say a word about it. That ain't gangsta. I ain't with it. Hey, what 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 made you think? What do you think made him respond to that? Because people were saying like he's name. not smart, Chuck. Big U was a name that we amped and pumped because we was on some build the West Coast. Rolling Sixties is a big gang, right? And when it came to the music industry, we chose him. Key to Rock was gone. We could have made it anybody. We chose him. You was you gonna be the face of that in that section. Everybody had their section. But with the problem with him with him, he felt like he was supposed to be the man. You can't be the man on a plan that already existed, nigga. He started losing the homies when he started doing interviews saying, if I would have been the street, death row wouldn't have been moving how they was moving. I don't know. He said like, that? On Paul Roo. That nigga went up on, on Breakfast Club and I got the call. They say, Whack, uh, we know what you've been doing, but this nigga getting beside himself. I can send you screenshots and text messages, nigga, when you see me on his bumper, nigga. Telling him, nigga, I don't need you for nothing, nigga. You can go your way, I go mine. Slow it down. Right? When he started to do that, they say, Whack. You don't see what he doing. Y'all done gave him a few plugs. You think he got some some motion. The nigga finna try to bro, we ain't worrying about that. That nigga ain't nobody with this shit, bro. He ain't nobody. We just didn't introduce him to a few niggas. He ain't got no business. He ain't got no budget. He ain't got no sense. He ain't got no know-how. He ain't got no radio streams. He ain't got no street teams. He ain't got none of that. He's a figment of our imagination. What we want him to look like to the people. What we want to turn that nigga off to this shit, we turn that nigga off. Damn, hey, you think that, um, hold on, that, um, give me one second. Look, Chuck, listen, give me one of his musical accolades. Yeah, I can't. Give I me can't one. Call, give man. me an album drop, a gold, a, a platinum. Give me one. Yeah, I can't call one. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You think that uh, Black Sam put that in that interview, though, to, like, shut Big U up? Because he was, he been going on a campaign, like, Let's just fuck say with this. Nip. I don't talk to Black Sam directly, but I talk to him indirectly. Black Sam put a call in a couple months ago and said, the things y'all been doing is motivating me to, to, to speak. And this is, it's the first time. Damn, that's crazy. Cause uh, I was wondering like, Black Sam, he held back for a minute. And then he, he mentioned that, and he said that was the day before his death. Should he Bro, know you notice death? he never mentioned Big U was helpful with this. He was fundamental with this. Big U was part of us when we did this. But we, he never mentioned his name and nothing. Is his, like, you know what? I wonder if it, so he ain't no pictures of Big U in that box. Because uh, on that interview, uh, Big Boy was talking about it's a box, like a collection box. And he was thanking, uh, Black Sam was thinking. Thanking him basically for being involved and being, you know, in his career and all that. So oh, big, you talking probably about, ain't in that you talking box. about big boy? Yeah, big boy. Yeah, big boy. That's he helped all of us. I mean, that's that's you know, that's 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 our funk flex. 
You know, that's the voice of the city when it comes to radio. You know what I'm saying? That's Greg Street in Atlanta. Funk Flex up there. Cosper Kev in Philly. You know, he he, he one of those. Right? Uh, but you ain't got, bro, when I tell you, what Vic you did do to him is come to us and get him on the tour. Took direction on how to get his deal. I told the nigga what to do, what not to do. I said, bro, the nigga got his own movement. Don't bully the nigga. He got his own movement. Let him grow. Stand with the nigga. Show the nigga you with him. I said, because they, they already watching you. Nigga, 45 days after Nipsey got that deal, went to New York with Johnny Shipes. He called the nigga Big U and said, bro, I don't think me and you going to vibe together. You ain't good for my brand or what you trying to do. I'm trying to go a whole nother direction. Nigga, that's when he knocked that nigga out. Uh, um, Nipsey came back, did a song, dissed the nigga in the song, with dissing him in the song, and then that's when all that shit happened. You talking about the, the knockout? You talking about like that that uh, fight that happened in the alley? No, that's right there, the same where he got killed. It happened the same spot. Same, same spot. Same spot. Yeah, Damn, is that what? Uh, who was that? Who be on here? Uh, yeah, start with the R. Be over there with y'all. Who? Uh, damn, that's bro, Rose. Yeah, yeah Rose. Rose. That's that's what Rose was talking about. That incident. Yeah. Yeah, Rose was there. He was there. Yeah. So it's like that's why I'm, nigga. You got to remember, me and Nipsey ain't never had a direct problem. His problem was me with my ties to Big U, and my problem with Nipsey is I don't give a fuck what you and Big U going through. Any nigga in here from New York who was following the movement, we broke Nipsey in New York on New York radio, Hot ninety seven shade forty five. So when Slay what to go do is his That's album. A fact. That's a fact. Nigga, we broke that nigga. We had that nigga up there more than everybody, like four times. Had the DJs in the city spinning his music, all that sh- right? We actually, if niggas remember, he for one time when Slay tried to get him to freestyle and he locked up. Right? So Slay so said, yeah, whack, I'm working on my album. Need a verse from Nip. I say, big you like whack, big you know. I said, man, I don't give a fuck what y'all got going on, bro. This nigga done been up here four times. Nigga, I'm the gateway from LA to New York for radio. So, nigga, I can't go back and tell Slay no, nigga. Tell Nip, tell that business, nigga. Like, he, if he's smart, he want to keep that right anyway. So, you know, uh, Big, you feed me, man, the nigga this, the nigga this, the nigga that. It probably about two years later, we both end up at Platinum Motorsport. We all get our cars done on, on, uh, Melrose we both dolo perfect I jump out he jump out he like cuz I need to holler at you I, said, I need to holler at you too he said whack man you being sick no business I said nigga I don't give up y'all business hold up did he just say whack be all in six so business but to my understanding don't big you tell whack six so business you also heard whack say he told me everything but uh, Clubhouse TV, y'all. Let's get back to the content. Been the block, nigga. What I'm in y'all business, well, homie. I know that you know a lot of shit that going with him come through you. You know, I I was around. I said, look, I don't give none of that. My problem with you is I let you go up there with Slate four five times through this nigga, but it was for you. Slate reached out for his verse, nigga, cause you getting into it with this nigga. You just lie for Slate his verse. He said, I'm rolling sixties. I'm out of line for that. Get Slate on the phone. He talked to Slay right there in the parking lot. I'm here with Wack. I didn't even realize at the end of the day I wasn't with nothing, Big U. That's what it was. But you shouldn't have got caught up in this because what you really did for a nigga. And I'm going to make that happen. And from that day forward, at least once, twice a month, me and Nip was on the jack. You ain't never heard Nip speak on me in no other way. Ever. Hey, when J-Rock was talking about something about a, a motorsport uh, parking lot incident, is he talking about this? Moment you just described. J Rock wasn't there. You gotta remember, Nip used to call me J. I saved J Rock life. J Rock was homeless. YG then fired the nigga. He was homeless. He kept calling me for a job. We had a vent to do in Vegas at Planet Hollywood with Game. I said, show up. I put him on the bus. Me and Game getting into it. Who the fat black ugly nigga got on my mind? He security nigga got a gun whack. I don't know this nigga. I said, well, listen, nigga. He, I, I, he I'm responsible. I forced him every time we move and show up, show up, show up. After about a month, game, you know, relax to the nigga. Then we had to go to Miami for 30 days and record at Cool and J Studio. I fly the nigga out there on my dime and put him in the in the house I had game in. 
right? So Gang said, all right, whack, we're going to put the nigga on payroll, right? So everything was great for them years, for like two, three years. And then one day, Game and uh, the other homie was leaving the club, and Game going to back out in his Rolls Royce. And he sees some commotion going on behind his car. And he had already warned me, yo, bro, this nigga J-Rock be extra out. Be doing too much calls and problems. Like, he be trying to start fights and nigga, it ain't like that serious. He need to know how to secure, right? So J-Rock get into it with a nigga behind game car. This was the last straw game in the home. He had to get out and help J-Rock because the nigga was whooping J-Rock ass. He said, why? No, I'm paying the security. That I got to get out and help fight because he started the fight that didn't even need to be going on. That's when I let him go. So Nip would start calling me like, yo, whack. What you be experiencing? I said, look, he got baby mama problems. He going to lie to you when she tripping. Other than that, the nigga going to do his job. He can't fight. I said, he good there to have a gun, but I don't know if he going to shoot because the incident happened in the PJ Watts over there when T.I. Then was over there. When them niggas took off on all them niggas, the nigga didn't bust, right? So I don't know, right? I said, far as just a big body at the door, cool. Securing you directly, nah. And as y'all see, that incident at um, BET, the JW Marriott, where Nip ended up having to squabble with a nigga. Y'all saw that, right? Hell yeah, Nip slapped Yeah, nigga. everybody saw that. Yeah, J-Rock, I said, bro, he's a good body to have at the door but all the other shit you can't depend on that right that's why game let him go right so what nobody at platinum but me and nip that was it it was all but nobody there but me and nip nip was in the main back i think i might have been in my range or something wasn't nobody there but uh, me no and dope. Nip. You nobody so there. how you feel about like now <clears throat> loose in here he too he can respond to this too as well but now nip. a lot of people going with what loose said Bro, listen it's to the facts. It's the truth. No, who the f big you sent over there to shut Cali down? What team did he send over? My team, me and my team. Listen, yo, yo, look, Chuck. I told you the reason why they can't tell me nothing about no loose cannon is because now follow me, Chuck. When Big U was pointing the direction, you got to remember, and this is why Loose will tell you. Lucy say I stay out of whack and, and Big U because they too close. My yeah. nigga, all Big U would tell him is go see Lil Bro. All the details and the whatever come for me and then Lucy them move. So you can't tell me, you can't tell me who this nigga ain't and is because nigga, this was your muscle. I identified Lucy as big used muscle i know that because this who you sent to me 10 out of 10 times for you and, and the crazy part too um whack is like people don't understand that even when y'all got into it my homies i'm, I'm from 60s right we stayed out of it because we already knew oh yeah this nigga tripping and then we'll we're going to have to go to war with every blood and every power rule probably in the city. You get what I'm saying? So we stayed out of it and let y'all work y'all business um, because y'all had that brother um, brother relationship. And people keep saying, oh, yeah, when it went bad. It never went bad until you decided to just say, basically, um, I'm moving on, nigga. That's what it is because you kept getting into too many problems and headaches with this nigga. Big, you never stop wanting to. You stop him, and everybody knew that. And and the world got it painted that Big, you one. I mean, like stop you or, or like and it's a, it's a problem too because the homies um, when there was an incident, the homies didn't even know how to move until you you drew down on everybody. Bro, listen to me, bro. Listen, it did what he did to Loose. Loose get up on Khaled. He do what he do. Get the nigga Big U on the phone. He thinking Big U gonna give his thing and they gonna clean up. He like, no, nephew, hold on. What <laughs> Yeah, on, on some bullshit. He used that to get next to Khaled. All them pictures he putting up, that's after Nip. That was, that's all after. That's all after. 
But even then, everybody handles the nigga with a long spoon. No right? Yeah. Nobody jumps in bed with him. For one, he don't know what to do with nobody. He just, he don't know. If you look at him and listen to him, he not that smart. He not a smart dude. Bro, you seen the nigga go on live, Ghost. On that clip I got, and say what he said, and then take his dumb ass to bootleg cast and say, yeah, I got him on the contract 10 years. That nigga ain't smart at all, bro. That nigga, no, that nigga, not. That nigga, that nigga really lining himself up for Eric Holder to use him as a get out of free jail card. That's the fact. But because he, that he nigga, that nigga, him. that nigga is just all he do. Hell yeah, because what this nigga doing, bro, all this shit that's coming out is is raising all this scrutiny for all these stories that like niggas was always saying like it was a hit. You know what I'm saying? Eric Holder was sent. Eric Holder was sent. And with all this shit coming out of him verifying certain stories that Black Sam said by putting up these pictures with Kaladin. Like, if Eric Holder was a smart nigga and he wanted to get out of jail, that nigga definitely could put a little story together on this nigga Big U, bro. This nigga could blame Big U probably and get out of jail, bro. That's just real, bro. Yo, what? Did uh, Eric Holder and Nipsey ever get it in? Like, did they ever uh, fight before? Yeah, they, they got in a fight. They got in a fight like a, a week and a half before that incident. You get what I'm saying? So that's why everybody knew like it was gonna be a problem that um like come up because eric holder wasn't a, a a fighter he was a shooter you get what i'm saying it is certain people you know that's gonna fight and certain people you know that's gonna shoot and and, and nip whooped on them so nine out of ten when eric holder pulled up on nip 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 kind of see seen it coming like i already know this shit's about it's about to go left no, everybody knew. Brand Paul, everybody that was in that parking lot knew what was going on or whatever. But like I said, when I got that call, when he walked in the first time, basically uh, he was supposed to be dead. You get what I'm saying? And then 30 minutes after that or whatever, that's when he, he died. But everybody knew. Why you think they all ran? Why you think Cowboy um, is hanging out with Big U now? Why you think Rand Paul and stuff haven't been to the hood? Do you get what I'm saying? These niggas know they did some bullshit. Yeah, Black Sam said that in the interview. That that kind of shows why Black Sam and the family don't cowboy because he said it was protocol for them niggas. When Nipsey, when Nipsey pull up, a nigga supposed to be in that doorway with a hood and a strap. Nobody did that. Why Cowboy and Rampart, none of them niggas did that shit. That shit, that shit lead me to believe them niggas might have been involved with that shit. Because if Cowboy back fucking with Big U and you was as close to Nipsey as you say you was, you know how Nipsey had to feel about Big U. You know what I'm saying? So why is you over there fucking with the nigga? But if you if, 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 if you so you if you so R.I.P. Nip, the marathon continues and shit, why you over there fucking with a nigga who don't care about it? Man, why did Rimpaw break that fast around that corner though, bro? The nigga was damn near hitting the corner before the good shot right. went off. Listen, think about how Cowboy got two shops. They were selling um, clothes in front of the marathon. It was all like, okay, we gonna become Nip. You you get what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. And then the, you cover up the mural and all that stuff. Like, y'all not watching his moves, the way he he's playing playing this game and, and thinking he's Nip now. You get what I'm saying? Facts. He's, he's selling, he was selling. He was selling bootleg. He was selling bootleg Nip on uh, marathon clothes, bro. Of That's course. what that nigga was selling. Bootleg marathon clothes in the marathon parking lot, bro. That shit's so disrespectful, bro. Because I know he ain't sending none of that money to Nip family, bro. No, but we talking about a week later they set up shop. You get what I'm saying? A week later. Yeah, that shit nasty, bro. That's some slime ball ass shit them niggas doing. Hey, yo, Loose. Yeah. Yo, Loose, just crack on me. I got a question, right? Earlier, earlier whack was like, um... Anybody, a leadership from the 60s could have been in that seat that you's in right now, right? But mm -hmm. certain, nick, certain niggas was locked up. So my question is, if Keto Rock was home, would Big U be able to do all that grimy shit that he's doing through the 60s? Fuck no. Because uh, you, you, have to, you have to understand that Keto Rock is in that same era as Big U. So a lot of... Um, he, he, he got like certain homies and certain OG homies. It's a, it's a lot of homies that just like, I'm gonna just do do my thing. You get what I'm saying? But Big U got the one thing that's that's a trump card and that's the grid program. 
and then a lot of people um, putting like walking past that. That grid program protects him with the police or whatever. He got homies getting paid, uh, giving tips and everything like that. Like it, it's, it's just a, a tough situation. All right, y'all, so after hearing the content, this is just another example of how Big U, in my opinion, was extorting Nipsey Hussle before and after death. And also how he tried to extort him. WAC 100 explains in the content how Nipsey Hussle brought DJ Khaled to the hood to shoot a video and Big U got wind of this and obviously got extremely jealous and greedy and said Nipsey should be going through him to bring someone of that magnitude to their section or their area. Nipsey, of course, did not agree with what Big U was doing and some things happened that I'm not going to speak about, but if you know, you know, and it's also in the previous content. But also, you notice how Wax said that everyone's thinking that picture was before Nipsey's death, but that picture was actually taken after. So what do you guys think about that? Also, the fact that Cowboy now is so close to Big U, it's really believable that they all have something to do with Nipsey's demise. Where was his security? Where was his protection? He was in his own spot, his own neighborhood, in his own store, and his own people failed to protect him. There's something definitely fishy with the story, but in the end, all dark things come to light. So I know Eric Holder, is in prison for the death of Nipsey Hussle, but I hope his family receives true justice for what happened to Nip. Because I definitely think something is wrong. Let me know what you guys think about this content in the comments. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you're always alerted when I drop new content. Also, join the media team, me, Clubhouse TV, Ray Give TV, Clubhouse Shenanigans, and the Ruminati Network. As always, I certainly appreciate y'all checking out Clubhouse TV. And I'll see y'all in the next video drop. I'm out, y'all. Peace.